Kawahine is a female creature that lives along riverbanks near bridges and watermills. It translates as river princess. She is sometimes known as Kawa Onago, river girl, Kawa Joro, river whore. Her main diet consists of eating young men. Kawahime live underneath bridges and watermills in western Honshu, Kyushu and Shikoku. They look like beautiful human women. However in some places they are said to have some kappa-like features as well. Kawahime spend most of their time in the water. They lurk underwater in the shade of structures like bridges or watermills and wait for young men to venture close to the water. They leave out of the river and land on a bridge or a riverbank. When a young man approaches, the Kawahime emerges from the water. She bewitches him, making him fall completely in love with her. She is then free to drain him of his life force. In areas where Kawahime are known to appear, elderly villagers warn young men to stay clear of strange women by the rivers. When a Kawahime is nearby, young men are told to keep their gaze pointed towards the ground, hold their breath, and walk away as quickly as possible. Kawahime may originate from ancient superstitions about outsiders. Long ago, when everyone in a village knew each other, it was rare to leave your hometown. It would have been very suspicious to encounter a lone, unknown woman along a riverbank. If she were from a neighboring village, a young man would be courting trouble from her relatives by needless socializing with her. Cautionary tales about the dangers of unknown women and yokai lurking at the outskirts of villages may have been invented to avoid strife with neighboring villages and help reinforce a community's bonds. More recent depictions of Kawahime often give her kappa-like features, such as reptilian skin or webbed hands and feet. A young man was traveling through a valley on his way to visit a friend. Near the riverside, he came upon upon a lone, beautiful woman coiling a spool of thread. The man found this suspicious. He thought she must be some kind of bakemono. He threatened the woman, but she only responded with a creepy laugh. To see if she really was a yokai, he drew his sword and slashed at her thread in two. The woman cackled and dove into the river. The young man finally arrived at his friend's home. When he told his friend what had happened, his friend warned him that the sword which cut her thread will have lost its ability to cut. He lent him a different sword for the journey home. When the young man returned home, he passed through the same valley. The suspicious woman was waiting for him by the riverside. She challenged him saying, your sword which cut my thread cannot harm me. However, the young man was carrying his friend's sword. He cut the woman down, slaying her. That woman was actually a kawahime. The most famous Hashihime story comes from Surugi no Maki, in the tale of the Heike, and is retold in the no-play Kanawa. A woman visited the, the Kafune Jinja in Kyoto at the hour of the ox, roughly 2 a.m., filled with rage and jealousy towards her ex-husband who had thrown her away for another woman. Night after night she visited the shrine, praying to the gods enshrined there to turn her into a powerful demon. The woman wanted nothing else other than to see her ex-husband destroyed, even at the cost of her own life. After seven nights of pilgrimage, her prayers were answered. The gods told her that if she immersed herself in the Uji River for 21 nights, she would become a living demon. The woman did as she was bid. She donned a white robe and tied her hair up into five horns. She painted her face and covered her body in crimson dye. She placed an upturned trivet on her head and attached torches to each foot. She lit a torch on both ends and placed it in her mouth. She immersed herself in the Uji River and for 21 days she kindled the hatred in her heart. Then, just as the gods told her, after 21 days she transformed into a terrible Kiho with supreme power. She had become the Hashihime of Uji. That night, her husband awoke from a horrible dream with a premonition of danger. He quickly sought out the famous Anmyoji, Abe no Seime. Seime recognized the dream as a sign that the man's former wife would come and destroy the couple that very night and promised to save them. He went to their house, recited magical prayers, and crafted two katashiro, magical paper doll representations of the man and his wife, meant to be used as substitutionary targets for the Kiho's rage. That night, as Seimei had predicted, the demon appeared. She attacked the two katashiro instead of the real couple, and Seimei's magic worked. Her power was reflected back upon her and she was driven away. The demon woman, Realizing that she could not overcome Abe no Seimei's magic, vanished, threatening that she would come back another time. Hashihime is known as the Lady of the Bridge, 
Pashahime are intensely jealous goddesses who inhabit bridges, in particular, very old and very long bridges. As goddesses, Hashihime may take different forms depending on occasion, however they are commonly depicted wearing white robes, white face paint, an iron trivet, and carrying five candles. This is a ceremonial outfit used to perform curses. Hashihime ferociously guard the bridges they inhabit. As with most gods connected to a location, they are very competitive and jealous. If one praises or speaks positively about another bridge while on top of a Hashihime's bridge, or if one recites lines from certain no plays that feature a woman's wrath as the main theme, something terrible is likely to happen to that person. Despite their fearsome nature, they are highly honored by the people who live nearby, and shrines are established in their honor near the bridges they inhabit. In times of war, residents will beseech their local Hashihime to guard the bridge against invaders. In times of peace, Hashihime are goddess of separation and severing, and are asked to aid people in things such as breakups, divorce, and severing bad luck. So strong is their power of severing that it is considered taboo for lovers to pass in front of a Hashihime shrine together, or for wedding processions to pass in front of one. If newlyweds need to cross a bridge inhabited by a Hashihime, they will instead pass underneath it on a boat rather than risk cursing their marriage. The most famous Hashihime story comes from Tsurugi no Maki, in the tale of the Heike, and is retold in the no play Kanawa. A woman visited the, the Kafune Jinja in Kyoto at the hour of the ox, roughly 2 a.m., filled with rage and jealousy towards her ex-husband who had thrown her away for another woman. Night after night she visited the shrine, praying to the gods enshrined there to turn her into a powerful demon. The woman wanted nothing else other than to see her ex-husband destroyed, even at the cost of her own life. After seven nights of pilgrimage, her prayers were answered. The gods told her that if she immersed herself in the Uji River for 21 nights, she would become a living demon. The woman did as she was bid. She donned a white robe and tied her hair up into five horns. She painted her face and covered her body in crimson dye. She placed an upturned trivet on her head and attached torches to each foot. She lit a torch on both ends and placed it in her mouth. She immersed herself in the Uji River and for 21 days she kindled the hatred in her heart. Then, just as the gods told her, after 21 days she transformed into a terrible Kiho with supreme power. She had become the Hashihime of Uji. That night, her husband awoke from a horrible dream with a premonition of danger. He quickly sought out the famous Anmyoji, Abe no Seimei. Seimei recognized the dream as a sign that the man's former wife would come and destroy the couple that very night, and promised to save them. He went to their house, recited magical prayers, and crafted two katashiro, magical paper doll representations of the man and his wife, meant to be used as substitutionary targets for the Kiho's rage. That night, as Seimei had predicted, the demon appeared. She attacked the two Katashiro instead of the real couple, and Seimei's magic worked. Her power was reflected back upon her and she was driven away. The demon woman, realizing that she could not overcome Abe no Seimei's magic, vanished, threatening that she would come back another time. Hitobashira refers to the gruesome practice of burying a living human being in the foundations of important buildings, bridges, dams, tunnels, and particularly castles. It was a common practice during large construction projects from ancient times through the 16th century. A human sacrifice was desirable during a building project. However, there is evidence that Hitobashira were still being used in some construction projects during the 20th century. This form of sacrifice was used as a magical ward for the building being constructed. It was believed that the sacrifice of a human soul would appease the nature spirits in an area, particularly the river spirits in areas where flooding was common. They were also used to ward castles against assault, fire, and other disasters both man-made and natural. Although Hitobashira literally means human pillar, the actual meaning is more complicated. Pillars and Shinto have a long relationship. Kami can be enshrined in pillar-like sacred trees, the oldest shrines were built upon pillars, and Hashira, in addition to meaning pillar, is also used as the Josushi, Japanese counterword, for Kami. The Bashira in Hitobashira refers not to a literal pillar, but actually to this counterword. The human was enshrined in a manner similar to a Kami of the building to which he or she was sacrificed, becoming both a literal pillar and a connection to the gods. Very often, Small stone memorials were erected in honor of the Hitobashira who were sacrificed to a building. Some still stand today. 
A few famous castles in Japan are connected to legends of Hitobashira. Maruoka Castle in Fukui Prefecture, Old Echizen Province. One of the oldest surviving castles in Japan, is said to contain a Hitobashira in the central pillar of the keep. While Maruoka Castle was being constructed, its walls kept collapsing no matter how many times they were repaired. It was decided that a person should be sacrificed and made into a Hitobashira in order to improve the stability of the castle. A poor, one-eyed woman named Oshizu was selected for the honor of becoming a Hitobashira. As a reward for her sacrifice, she was promised that her son would be made a samurai. After she was sacrificed the castle was completed. However, before her son could be made a samurai, the castle's lord was transferred to another province, and the promise was left unkept. Every year thereafter, the castle's moat overflowed when the heavy spring rains came. The people of Maruoka blamed this on Oshizu's vengeance, and called this rain, Tears of Oshizu's Sorrow. Afterwards, a cenotaph was erected for Oshizu inside the castle grounds to calm her spirit.